Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of News Dose, where I give you all of the latest gaming news. And we have a lot of PlayStation news to talk about today. PlayStation may have a tendency of being a little bit silent, but not during this last weekend because we got a lot to discuss, including PlayStation acquisitions, backwards compatibility, PlayStation first party games going over to the PC, and maybe even a PlayStation 5 event. So don't go anywhere and I'll give you all of the latest details on the PlayStation 5. Also did a big Nintendo sequel get teased as well. So stay tuned for that, but first let's go over some of the quick news starting off with some new game releases. So check this game out. No, this is not Sea of Thieves, but instead, this is Blazing Cells. And yeah, it looks pretty identical to Sea of Thieves. I mean, the art, the pirates, the ships, and pretty much everything looks the same as Sea of Thieves, with a little less polish, of course. Now, I don't necessarily have anything against clones per se, if you can do some original stuff as well, but Blazing Cells is a bit shameless in its inspiration here, to the point it's almost questionable if what they're doing here is legal or not. Honestly, I would not be surprised if Blazing Cells is using some of Sea of Thieves assets here, and I also wouldn't be surprised if Microsoft looks into this game and tries to take it down. With that said, the developers behind Blazing Cells did post in their facts that it does feel different than that other stylized pirate game, but you know, I will be interested to see how the community accepts this game. Sea of Thieves is very popular on Steam right now, and Blazing Cells will release into early access on September 9th. But will there be an actual reason for fans to jump over to this game? That is the question, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Now, if you are a fan of Sea of Thieves, though, I do have some good news for you because dogs will be included in the next big Sea of Thieves update, and yes, you will be able to pet them. So get ready for that. Moving on, though, since we are talking about a rare game, let's rewind for a moment and talk about an old rare game, Jet Force Gemini. Now, Jet Force Gemini was a pretty good 3D platformer, third-person shooter for the Nintendo 64. It certainly wasn't one of Rare's most popular games, but it was really good, and some old Rare developers are actually making a spiritual successor titled Tamarin, and I have to say, this little guy looks absolutely adorable. I really like the realistic but cartoony look it has here. It seems to have a collect-a-thon aspect to it with platforming, and there is those third-person shooting sections as well. I myself pre-ordered this game well over a year ago, so I'm really looking forward to its release, and luckily we do finally have a release date for September 10th on Steam and the PlayStation 4. It will eventually come to Xbox One, as they have confirmed it is already in development, though a release date has not been given just yet. Either way, I think this game looks really good, and if you like the old Jet Force Gemini game, you may want to check this one out. Now we also got a release date for Raji and Ancient Epic as well. It was just a few short weeks ago when Raji got a surprise shadow launch for the Nintendo Switch, and it was announced as a timed Switch exclusive. And this game does look pretty good and kind of like Prince of Persia in many ways, so fans have been curious as to when it would be heading to other platforms. So here I have some good news. Raji will be heading to the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and the PC on October 15th. Yeah, you're not even going to have to wait for too long. I haven't played this game myself yet, but I have been hearing good things, so I'm always happy to hear about games going multi-platform so more fans can enjoy said game. Let's talk about Nintendo though because we got some interesting stuff here to talk about. I know it's been a little weird recently with Nintendo because they just have not been announcing games. They have talked about independent games and some third party stuff, but what about the big stuff? So I know Nintendo fans are growing impatient, and honestly, I feel you, I really do. But out of nowhere, Hideki Kamiya posted Astral Chain 2 this weekend. There wasn't really any follow up or anything like that, it was just Astral Chain which of course drew a lot of speculation. I mean, why wouldn't it? Fans really seem to believe that this was Hideki Kamiya teasing an Astral Chain sequel, which honestly would be awesome. It's actually one of my favorite Nintendo Switch games, so I would love a sequel personally, and in fact it reportedly sold rather well, and Platinum Games has even expressed interest in doing a trilogy. So yeah, I think if Platinum Games wanted to, they could probably get Nintendo to sign off on an Astral Chain sequel, but at the same time, I don't think Hideki Kamiya is teasing an Astral Chain 2 in this specific tweet. 
It's just too odd to make a big announcement that way, and from what I have seen in the past, he kind of trolls a lot on Twitter and pretty much blocks everybody, so he very well could just be trolling here. But the bigger thing is, it was Astral Chain's one year anniversary. It did release last year on August 30th, so this could have just been Hideki Kamiya throwing some love over to Astral Chain during the anniversary, but still, I have to say, we really do need a sequel here. Astro Chain is a fantastic game, so I'm hoping Nintendo and Platinum Games can work out some kind of an arrangement for this to happen. First though, they should probably finish up on Bayonetta 3. I mean, we've been waiting a long time for that game. Now, we did get one more tease for a new Nintendo game. This one is coming from the insider Dusk Gollum, which has been very accurate with his Capcom related leaks, and he is claiming that a new Monster Hunter Switch game will be revealed very soon. He didn't give any specific date or how it would be announced, but Monster Hunter of course is a huge franchise. It's always been very big in Japan, but what's been really interesting to see is how Monster Hunter has exploded throughout the rest of the world with Monster Hunter World. In fact, it's now sold over 16 million copies worldwide, so yeah, this is a very big deal for the Switch to get a new Monster Hunter game. He also says it's using a compatible Resident Evil engine, which in my opinion is just more great news. The Resident Evil engine looks fantastic, so I'm all for that. With that said, like any other leak, take this news with a grain of salt, but I will say that Dusk Golem clearly has Capcom related contacts. He did leak Resident Evil 8 with very specific details well before it got officially announced by Capcom, and everything he said was correct, so take that as you will. Moving on to the PlayStation stuff though, Dusk Golem was not finished leaking information as he also revealed that Silent Hills is indeed still in development and there will be a PlayStation 5 event in the first half of September. And if you really look into it, he may be right about this event because Sony seems to be ramping up for some kind of big announcement. Just last week, they opened up the PlayStation 5 pre-order registrations, then a PlayStation 5 Doritos campaign was spotted this week, there was also some PlayStation 5 commercials showing off the DualSense controller, and last but not least, the Latin America and Australian YouTube accounts posted some mysterious private videos on their channels. So yeah, it does seem like Sony is preparing to make a big announcement rather soon. They could then talk about some more launch window games and maybe give some official release dates for games like Demon's Souls and Ratchet and Clank. Also, could this be the place where we finally get to hear the official release date and the price for the PlayStation 5? I certainly hope so, which this could be big news for not just PlayStation, but also Xbox. We know that Xbox delayed their August event to September because they want Sony to announce the PlayStation 5 price first. So if Sony really does announce the price in the first half of September, expect Xbox to make an official announcement for their event shortly after. I do expect Xbox to then announce price, show some more gameplay, and reveal what their other first party studios are doing, such as the Initiative, Inexile, and Compulsion Studios. So we just have to see that first domino fall, and then I think both PlayStation and Xbox are going to have some pretty major campaigns heading into next generation. PlayStation did have a pretty busy weekend though, as they had some very interesting announcements, which I personally think is mostly good news. First off, PlayStation is looking to acquire more studios. PlayStation's bread and butter, of course, have been their first party studios, and they really know how to foster and grow studios to make great games. I mean, when you look at Naughty Dog, Sony Santa Monica, Guerrilla Games, and Sucker Punch, you see top tier talent. So clearly, Sony does a great job with their first party developers, and it'll be interesting to see who they're looking to acquire. We do know that they were interested in the Warframe developers at one point in time, but Tencent kind of swooped in on that, so I assume they probably backed off on that acquisition, and I haven't really been hearing anything else on that front. With that said, Bluepoint would probably make sense for Sony as they have worked together quite a bit. Bluepoint did an excellent job with the Shadow of the Colossus remake, and they're of course working on Demon's Souls right now, so that would be a very interesting pickup. I will ask you though, is there any developer that you think Sony should target? Let me know in the comments below. Now something else that was very interesting that PlayStation announced was that they are going to explore releasing more of their games on PC. We have seen this with Death Stranding, Detroit Become Human, and Horizon Zero Dawn, but unlike the other two, Horizon Zero Dawn was published on PC by PlayStation themselves, and it was also developed by a first party studio. 
It did, however, release with a lot of bugs originally, but since its initial release, they have fixed a lot of its problems. And it looks like it did well enough for Sony to stop and take a look and say, hey, we may be onto something here. Let's try and put some more of our first party games on PC and see how they do, and why not? So far, they haven't really released a PlayStation game day one on the PC, and especially with Horizon Zero Dawn where it was a few years old anyways, I imagine it wasn't selling much on the PlayStation 4 by that point, so this was like free money for Sony. You might as well max out those profits and put it on PC, so how about bringing over some more PlayStation 4 games? Maybe Bloodborne, Uncharted, God of War, Shadow of the Colossus, or hey, maybe even their most recent game, Ghost of Tsushima. I imagine all of these games would do very well on PC. Now, I do know that some PlayStation fans don't like this idea, but it helps Sony make more money, and in return, they can make better games in the future. These big AAA games are not cheap to make, so you need to maximize those profits, and if you worry that this devalues the PlayStation for whatever reason, don't worry about it. Sony to this point has not been putting their games on PC day one, and it looks like with both Detroit Become Human and Death Stranding, you're probably looking at a 6-12 to 12 month wait for the PC game at the very earliest. And even then, there still is no guarantee. I don't know, I just really don't see the point of being upset about a game going multi-platform. That just means more people can enjoy the game, and it's weird to me how some fans act like suddenly their experience got worse because others are enjoying the same game you previously enjoyed. It is what it is though, but do expect more PlayStation PC games in the future. Probably not day one, but they'll more than likely explore that PlayStation back catalog. On to our last topic though, and I'll try to make this one quick, but unfortunately it seems like Ubisoft may have confirmed that the PlayStation 5 will not support PlayStation 1, 2, or 3 backwards compatible games. This was kind of expected, but still very unfortunate. I would have loved to have played some of these old legacy games on the PlayStation 5, but that doesn't seem like it's going to happen. Personally, I do play backwards compatible games on the Xbox quite often. I just played Lost Odyssey a few short months ago on Xbox, and I have several others installed right now for me to play, including Rayman 3 and Blink's The Time Sweeper. So there are people like me that enjoys going back to these old games. So I wish Sony would have tried harder to bring these legacy games over, but it is what it is. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to hit the bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.